This is the Kosori French Press model C801-FP, I guess for French Press. This is a French Press coffee maker. Um, for people that do keep the boxes, it is nice that they keep the instructions right on the side panel, which you can also just cut out and keep handy. But uh, there is one flaw in the instructions here, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, the booklet is well written. You can reach them. They have a website and a, a phone number. Thank you for purchasing. All that kind of stuff. They show you the assembly of it. And all that kind of stuff here. I just lost the page. How to use it. All that kind of stuff. And the warranty on it. This is everything that's in the box. Everything is very well packaged in there, so really you wouldn't have to worry about breakage and shipment or anything like that. It's very well protected. Styrofoam on all sides. Really, really nicely packed. Um, for those of you who have never used a French press before, I don't know what I'm doing. I've practiced with this a couple times and see how it works, and it works very well. I think it's made exceptionally well, actually. Uh, nice glass carafe which comes out of this metal thing with the handle. Uh, the top here, which I guess I'm going to probably need two hands to uh, take off. This is more or less the business end of it. The rest is just a glass carafe. I have some water boiling off to the side over here, so you're going to be hearing that uh, boil up as we go here. There are a lot of parts to this, as much as it doesn't seem. We'll get to that in a moment, where I'll actually take it apart for you so you can see it. Uh, in the meantime, I will show you that they give you two stirrers. They want you to use these in here so you don't break it. Now that's again where the instructions get a little bit wonky, because they say don't use any metal utensils in there, and these are indeed metal. So I guess they don't want you to use a big heavy spoon or something like that. They also give you this bendy spoon. They give you a big spoon, which is one tablespoon, and they give you two extra screens. The original screens are on there. They're exactly the same, they're just replacements. Okay, it opens up to all of these different parts here. It's very easy to put back together, it's no big deal. Uh, so don't be discouraged here with all the different parts. So how do you use the thing? Well, it's as simple as following the directions, which are a little bit off. Really, the only problem is what they wrote here with the amount of coffee. Now, you do this to taste, but it says the general rule is one teaspoon of coffee for every, every four-ounce cup. That is incorrect. It is one tablespoon of coffee which is why they give you a tablespoon measure just like that okay it's that simple uh it's tablespoon not teaspoon that threw me for a loop the first time so uh didn't work out so well but uh like i said i've played with it a few times and it does work well so now i'll show you how it works this is the coffee i'm going to be using today it's pete's coffee major dickinson's blend dark roast um, they're not sponsoring me or anything, it just happened to be what I had in the cabinet. So that's what we're going to use. Now, this is whole bean coffee, so you do want to grind it. The reason you need to grind it is because a French press coffee maker like this requires a coarse grind. The stuff you buy your Maxwell House or Folgers or anything like that is a much finer grind meant for drip coffee makers or percolators or anything like that. So, um, really the best flavor is going to come from whole beans that you grind yourself. And that's no matter if you use a French press or any other coffee maker. Uh, bear in mind, I'm not a coffee connoisseur. I am not a barista by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just showing you what I learned and how this works. For those of you who are wondering why I'm doing this in my basement to top the washing machine, it's because... This is where I do my videos. It's just a convenient spot, and I have everything I need down here. I can go upstairs to the kitchen and do it there, but I have everything I need here. Anyway, this is not the correct coffee grinder that the breezes will tell you that you need to use. This is called a blade grinder. It just has a blade that spins around there. Don't do that. You can cut yourself. 
Uh, this makes eight cups, so I'm going to make a full pot. So we're going to put in eight tablespoons of coffee. Now it is really eight tablespoons of ground coffee, but trust me, this is going to be a much easier way to do it. Okay, here is my El Cheapo coffee grinder with the coffee I just put in it. And we're going to grind this to a coarse grind. I'll show you the outcome of it after I do it here. Okay. Without opening the lid so I don't spill everything, that is approximately a coarse grind. I'll see if I can actually just shake that down in there so you can see. Now the reason why you don't want a blade grinder for the actual baristas, as they say, is because you get some real big ones and a lot of little small ones in that and it doesn't give you a very even coffee flavor. Uh, this is going to be more than perfect for about probably 90% of the population, if not more. Here's yet again another shot of the coffee. It's very coarsely ground. It's not, you don't want to over grind it because then A, it's not going to work as well, and B, um, you could get coffee grounds through the little screen things at the bottom there. At this point, you can dump in the coffee. Okay, like that. I'm making a full pot, so that's eight cups. That's going to fill just about up to that line there. So I have my hot water over here, and we're simply going to pour that right in. About right there. Now, we'll take one of the stirrers, and you want to stir this up good. You're going to get like mud looking stuff on the top. Don't worry about it. It's going to stir in here. Stir it up real good. And once you do that, now you put the top on, but do not press down the plunger. So keep it pulled all the way up and just stick the top on it. It takes a little doing just to get it in there. You gotta play with it a bit. Okay, there we are. Just kinda needed to wiggle it a little more and get it in place. Do not press down the plunger. Now you have to wait. The instructions say four minutes. If you want a stronger cup of coffee, you can wait a bit longer. I feel about five minutes for this particular coffee and the way I grind it is best. Okay, now it's time for the magic to happen. We need to push down the plunger slowly. Okay, that's down, and we are ready to serve. And there we are, your cup of coffee. Now, do not store your coffee in here because the grinds in here keep brewing. Uh, if you have a carafe or something that will keep it hot, that's best. I don't, so I'm just going to pour it in here and I'll heat it up as needed. You can see that besides the steam and everything else there, that keeps the grinds at bay. So that looks like it did a good job. Now, of course, you can dress this up with some milk and sugar or some, uh, what do you call it, syrup, you know, flavored syrup or something like that that you like to add to your coffee. You can stir it using a little spoon like that, you know, 
so you can use that if you want. And there is your finished cup of coffee with the Kosuri French press. So all around a really nice French press makes eight cups at a time. It's fairly simple to use once you get the hang of it and if you're going to go for a French press it's not something that's going to happen the first time. You do need to experiment a bit and see what works best for you and what coffee you want to use and what coffee grinder you have etc. Uh, that's what I found works best for me. Build quality is excellent. It just, you know, it looks a treat, it works a treat, it's built well, all around a nice product. If you'd be interested in purchasing that, I'll put a link in the video description where you can find it on Amazon. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.